Good afternoon to you. Madrid, of course, last hosted a Formula One Grand Prix back in 1981. So what does this decision mean for the future of motor racing in Spain, do you feel? Well, Vicky, yes, it means it's very much secured. I mean, there's no greater rivalry, is there? Not only on the football field, but mm -hmm. also it seems now in boots racing between the Spanish cities of Madrid and Barcelona. So Barcelona has held the race since 1991 at a very uh, well-known testing venue, purpose-built circuit. And now we're going to Madrid from 2026. So. Uh, the, the Formula One boss has been in conversation with Madrid for quite some time, so we've known that this has been on the horizon. It's uh, really the plan is to put it around the Madrid uh, Exhibition Center. So in Madrid, it's called the IFEMA, the Exhibition Center. So in our terms, it's like running a Grand Prix around the Birmingham National Indoor Arena or London's Excel Center and running it on part of the A13 if you're going to run it down uh, okay. the Excel Center. But they're all very excited about it. There's going to be uh, run it through a couple of tunnels. There might be a banked corner as well. So really, I think we're looking at, you know, it, 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 it'll be ambitious for Formula One and for Spain, despite Spain having two top line drivers in Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz to expect to have two Grand Prix on an increasingly busy calendar. But well, judging by that opening ceremony, they've certainly got the ambition. OK, so does that mean that you think both Madrid and Barcelona will stay on the calendar? Or will perhaps Barcelona drop off in the future? What do you think? I would imagine that Barcelona, unless they can come up with an astonishing amount of money, will probably drop off. I wouldn't be surprised if for 2026, which is the first year that Madrid has a contract for, that they both will be on the calendar. Uh, Madrid is, you know, uh, exciting, but Barcelona is somewhat of F1 heritage. But after that, I wouldn't have imagined that there would be space uh, for both, not least because Formula One's intention, part of their intention in bringing it to Madrid is that it's a sustainable Grand Prix where people can get to it very easily by public transport. And that's not something that's easily done in Barcelona. The circuit there is about half an hour outside the city centre. OK, I mean, it's a long length, isn't it, the deal, uh, until 2035. What do you read into that? Does it, does it mean that it might be tweaked along the way, you'd think? I'm not sure. I think it's just par for the course of what Formula One is doing with their Grand Prix. It makes it the uh, joins Australia, which has a Grand Prix's 20. 35 and Bahrain, which has a Grand Prix to 2036, now Madrid as the third really long-term destination. And talking of destination, that's what Formula One want to make it. They want to make it a city destination that you'll be able to go to Madrid, enjoy the delights of the city, maybe catch a game, depending on what time of year they schedule the Grand Prix, we still don't know that, and then get the uh, the metro or a bus or something uh, to the new uh, Madrid Grand Prix. But uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. That's what Formula One's going for, really extending long-term deals through into the mid-2030s. It sounds marvellous. Uh, let's talk about this season, then. It gets underway in Bahrain. Can you believe next month? Uh, no rest for the wicked, some say. Uh, look, have we had any early indicators about how the teams are shaping up? Are we going to see a more competitive season this time around, you feel? I think we have. I think the only indicators we've seen are somewhat uh, of uh, team bosses in chaos. We've had Gunter Steiner <laughs> gone as the, uh, as the Haas team boss. So we're welcoming in a new team boss already and the season hasn't even started. But we have the newly signed up team boss of Mercedes, Toto Wolff, who's extended his contract to stay with the team, saying that they are seeing promising things for Mercedes so that Lewis Hamilton and George Russell can expect a car that really matches their talents. And that's the only real whisper we've had out from any of Red Bull's competitors so far. Uh, that Toto Wolff is saying that the sounds from the, the noises from the design office and the wind tunnel are for the first time this Mercedes actually feels like a proper racing car rather than a compromised package, which is what they've had for the last couple of seasons. So that's uh, reasons to be cheerful, optimistic uh, for George Russell and for Lewis Hamilton. We haven't had much news outside from Ferrari except for today, Vicky, where they seem to put out something on social media indicating they're going into the world of sailing. Oh. So maybe it's uh, an America's Cup. Maybe they're joining up with uh, uh, Luna Rossa and uh, becoming a, uh, a sponsor for the Italian entry for the America's Cup. It's all very cryptic. All that they've said is that we exist uh, in uh, on the track and on the sea. So, uh, well, read into that what you can. For me, that says that Ferrari are going sailing sometime in the future. We await more from the Italian team. Looking forward to that already. Thank you very much, Ted, as always. Good to speak to you.